All right, guys. So uh, the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about codes, um, different types of codes, things that uh, we could pull out of the scriptures, learning how to reconcile the scriptures, uh, learning what is randomness and what is actual factual truth, um, you know, searching things like yourself, or, um, historical figures, things like that. Yeshua codes, another way. I did bring a couple of PDFs that um, my friend Luis Vega has done on older um, 2016 codes that I did, Hillary codes, and I was just, you know, at some point want to go over them with you guys just to kind of reflect on the accuracy of codes uh, in hindsight, after after we've seen things kind of play out with, um, you know, said topic. Um, has anybody got codes they want to share? Uh, I, I have a, I, I have some codes that I worked on with Brother Scott, but he's not here at the moment, so I'll just wait until he comes in, and then we can pick up uh, after he gets here. Okay. I actually think I finally have mine ready, Jonathan. Sure. I'm I'm a little nervous about this. Um, I'm nervous. It's all learning experience. I'm I'm. It's. I can find it. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I might have to take a minute and let somebody else go first while I pull it up. I thought I had it right here, but I do not. All right. I can just say something really quick. Sure. Um, I don't really have my code ready. I mean, I found a four words so far, but um, just to share what they are, just so you know what topic I'm doing. Um, since there was that going on about the Strait of Hormuz, I, I found Hormuz, um, and then I found the word straight, and I found um, name Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of looking to see, this is where I, my mind is, I'm, I'm kind of looking to see if it's about the oil in the physical, um, could there be a connection, of course, in the spiritual with the oil, the name. So kind of doing a comparison, seeing if I can find that all in one code. Well, I do know this. I do know the Straits of Hormuz as an, is an access term itself. That, that whole phrase, Straits of Hormuz, uh, it was worked by, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Moshe Ashok uh, from Canada years ago. When some I put that in. I couldn't find it, but I'll try it again. Maybe I have one letter wrong. I took it out of the newspaper from Israel uh, to see, make sure I was spelling it correctly. Yeah, I'll uh, have to go and look it up for you and, um, and see exactly see how. See if it's what I have, yeah. See, see what okay. he has down. Um, mm -hmm. But he, he worked that maybe seven or eight years ago because this is not a new thing. You know, that is mm -hmm. a very... Um, Strategic. Strategic place because it, this is the only way in and out of that gulf, right? And it's a very narrow pass. Uh, there's been some, uh, you know, some conflict there before, even shots fired. And it's always been expected that this would be like a, a sparking point um, for mm -hmm. war, particularly with Iran. They, they seem to be flexing their muscles a lot here in the past um, mm -hmm. well, few months with Trump, right? Um, but yeah, that's a, that's an interesting. So that's what I'm working on. <laughs> Very well. The gates of your enemy. Say again, Terrence. The gates of your enemy. There you go. About controlling the gates of yeah, your. Yeah, that's a good enemy. one. Yeah, I had the word passage, so I, I'm looking up a few different things. So I, that's where I am. Just to make it easy. John, Hello. I am. I saw a good thing on um, the uh, who owns like the, the Panama Canal, the um, and the various gates into the into the oceans. It was in that context, and it just made me uh, think of that because that's all changing. Yeah, that's that's a good um, search term, I would think. Molly, did you get squared away? I think so. Let's try this again. There she is. Okay, I guess let me know when you can see it. It's rendering now. 
Taking a while though. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Very good. Oh, cool. Okay. So, what we have here, something that it, it entered into my heart because of 5G. Yeah. That, that's how the Ruach put it to me. It, it was the question of, will the armor of Yahuwah protect us from 5G? And I, I really didn't know what I was going to find. But that's how this whole thing got started. Um, the title is Armor of Yahuwah. It's found in Joshua chapter 19, verse 13 through 20, verse 6. And it's a skip of only negative 55. Wow. This was uh, in the Tanakh only going to show up four times. It only showed up four times in the entire Tanakh. Thought was really odd because you would think something like that would have been there more often. But no. Um, the first term I found was 5G technology. And that was from here at a skip of negative 121. And it's hey, gimel, fresh, shin, and tav. And that crosses right over armor of Yahuwah. Wow. Um, deception, or, I'm sorry, missed the helmet. All five pieces of the armor are here. And uh, helmet runs down here. In the dark red, yeah, in the dark red. Um, and it's cough, resh, bet, iron. You can see how it crosses and does other stuff. That'll make more sense in a minute. Uh, deception, which is really, really cool how deception plays out. It wraps around the code, so it starts here, like it would wrap around your mind or try to wrap around you. And it starts out, and you got your head, wav, um, none, Aleph, and then it finishes up over here with the head. And I want to skip up a little bit because this head, sorry about that, this head actually shares with the breastplate. And the breastplate here in gold goes up with a skip of 381. Um, at het, where'd it go? Oh no, I blocked out the letters. I actually, oh snap. Sorry. Okay, this would be, um, Oh, a Tav, and this one here would be a um, Zion, and then your head. And I, I can't believe I did that. Um, what struck me was that this head down here shares dis, de, uh, deception and the breastplate. Uh and I thought it was really cool because one of the first things I thought was, let your heart not be deceived. Well, why do we wear the breastplate? To keep our hearts true. To protect it from being deceived. And here the het shares from the breastplate to the deception. And I just thought that was really, really cool. Very small area. Yes. Yes, it is. 
When we go back up, um, darkness is in here. And darkness is Tav, Shin, Kef, and uh, Het. And it crosses each other right here. Can I ask a question? Yeah. And one is, yeah. is a negative 52 skip and the other is a negative 56 skip. Rick, your mic, your mic's very low. Really? Okay. All right, there he is. There I am. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Well, hi there. Hi, how are you? How are I'm, you? I am so blessed. That's a great table. That's a great table. Thank you very much. I just, I just uh, joined, but did you look for the word uh, righteousness? Uh, because the second, it's not uh, reading this, the second piece of the armor of Elohim that Paul discusses in Ephesians 6 is the breastplate of righteousness. Yes, and I did try and do stuff along those lines early on. I did not find righteousness. Okay. I did try to do that, and I crossed it off. Okay. I had actually just originally curious, also... I'm, I'm trying to embellish here to help you. Yeah, I appreciate that um, very much. I try to look for it, and maybe I didn't spell it right, because I had also looked for Raphaim, um, demons... Uh, Nephilim and find any of those in there. Hold on a second, I can tell you how to spell it. Psalm 106. It's in Psalm 106. One way is Zadikot or Zadik. Yeah, Zadik, that's a great one. Oh, that's a great one. So it's it's uh, Psalm one hundred six, verse three. So righteous, so righteousness is zadik. Yeah, that's that's um. That's it. Zadik dalad yod kuf vav ta would be zadikult, or uh, zadik is just uh, three letters. Zadi dalit. Kuf, uh, hey. Mm -hmm. That's another way. That's the one in Psalm 106. You, you know, Mule, are you there? I'm um, yes, dear. Uh, do you know what Joshua 19 to 20 is about? Yes, it is all about the division of the land. Yeah, and, and in, in 20, it's about the refugee cities. Yes. But, but but 19 is like when they came into the land and <clears throat> like spiritually for me, I see it as like a type for us, for they use natural weapons, but we use spiritual. But this is when they had won with their weapons. I, we need I to be at one that. with ours. Sorry. And we need to be at one with our weapons. Yeah, yeah, we, we need to win. I think there's something interesting about this being where the refuge cities are because, we, you know, and I think it's seven, the seven refuge cities I may be wrong about that. Um, but you, uh, you would be protected in the city. As long as you're within the gates, um, you're protected. It's that's why they call it a refuge city. Uh, for instance, if you killed somebody and, and uh, brother of whoever wanted revenge, he could not touch you while you're in the city. Uh, he could wait outside the gate. As soon as you broke, at gate, he can get you, um, but as, you know, as long as you're in that city, you are under protection, and uh, he cannot ever touch you. And to, I mean, I, I think there's a strong connection of you know we're talking about 5G and the you know the protection of the armor of Yahuwah, right? Well, yeah. in this case, in areas, certain areas, yeah, there there are definitely I would see a um, protection that it's a, a refuge city. Quite possibly, there are places. Uh, that would you would be protected um, from 5G. I don't know that they're going to be completely global. I do know the deception behind it would be, oh, it's a good thing. You're going to have faster download speed on your iPad, right? Uh, and all this yeah. stuff. But they don't tell you 
the science and all the negative things. As a matter of fact, they're very deceptive about it. Oh, oh you, you're not nuking your I, brain. I, you're not cooking your insides. That's, I, I happen to live in a, in a radio dead zone. It's really, really hard to broadcast any radio signals in this area for about 50 miles. And the, se the cell phone reception here is actually really bad. So there are, there are places on the earth where they have uh, iron, a lot of iron in the ground. It really disrupts uh, radio communication, even, even in short wave like that. Yeah, mountains, um, uh, yeah. Um, magnetically um, charged areas like Kilauea. Uh, I noticed something with my gimbal um, getting very close to moving lava um, that it would it would cause my gimbal to freak out, just start turning them randomly. And um, when I did a little bit of searching on that, I found out that the Kilauea lava is actually a reverse polarity than what the Earth is on the surface. So uh, you pick up those kinds of interference. Uh, the other thing is they say that it has a strong, people even come to this island for this reason, it has a strong um, reaction to the human body. Um, some some people come here for, for that as a spiritual thing, right? To get their chiefs and chakras all in order and all that because of the magnetic stuff going on with the lava. Um, mountain valleys, you know, like when we were living in, in Utah, you know, a lot of iron and copper and, and silver in the mountains. Chris is probably, you know, on something there. It would be like a, a safe area where these frequencies don't exactly penetrate. Molly, I wanted to ask you, where is the word um, shield, the shield? Uh, shield is? In the yellow? Yeah. Oh, the yellow Semic, line. Semic, gimel, and none. Okay. It crosses through the armor. Okay. That's a great table. Thank you, by the way. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, Ruach, yeah, also, Ruach also crosses through the armor of Yehovah right here. Uh, yeah, this is, this is a really good table. Yes. Yeah, great so first table. I mean, I mean, this yeah. is like, um, you know, Gold. higher level than, than entry level code searching. It's very, I, I got to commend you. It's very good work. Yes. Uh, and yes. I appreciate the time that you put into it and you didn't just crank it out. You know, you're cranking out a dozen of them uh, with all these uh, bizarre interpretations. You kept it very concise. The topic is, you know, very, you know, it's relevant. Not, right, right. Relevant. You're yeah. not all over the place. You, you kept it um, really clean. Thank you. I, I, it's been a long time trying to get to it. Here how, do feel, how do you feel about it? How do you feel about it? I, I, I'm, I'm amazed at how four or five, six thousand years ago, Yahuwah put 5G technology over top of right? I mean, the, the armor of Yahuwah, and it's, it's, it's here. How is that um, possible, if not yeah. a divine hand, right? Um, all the pieces fit in here, although it is kind of funny, and it, I it showed up several times. The closest one I could find that wasn't, you know, there's, there was plenty more outside of this little tiny screen, but you get the middle three letters of the belt. Mm. You don't get the whole thing. Um, I don't get the uh, the first letter and the last letter, which would be a. Um, oh dear, I can't tell off looking at my notes if it's a top or if it's a head. Uh, but it would be down here, and then you got the gimel and the nun and the resh, and then up here somewhere would be the het. And uh, I, I, you know, when you're wearing a belt and you're looking at somebody, you don't see the whole thing. So I kind of decided I was going to let that slide as only getting the couple middle letters instead of the whole thing because. You don't see the whole belt when you're looking at somebody. Mm -hmm. Let it go. Because <laughs> I wanted to make sure that it showed it would be in here if it were a larger area. When, when I, I, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Quick. No, you go first. 
Oh, I was just going to say, this is a really good demonstration of how how coaches, CodeFinder works, and it's a good program. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. You might remember from last week or whatever. I put in the uh, Discord chat just what the how many times Shalom wrapped around all of it, and it encompassed the armor, which I I I couldn't not have all the eleven times that Shalom showed up because there's so much Shalom when you're wearing your armor because you know you're safe. You know that you're, you're, you've, you've put yourself in Yahuwah's hands to the point where every step you take, every word that comes out of your mouth, every thought that you have is, is captured so that you don't stray from that road. And, and so that Shalom had gone all around it, just boggled my mind. But I did show it a couple of times here, got it across the top here, and where's the other one? Maybe I only picked it once? I might have only picked it once, or I missed yeah, the other one. Down in the bottom left-hand corner in the red. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. I see your name yeah. is in there, too. That's cool. Yeah, I did find my name, and, and it's at a skip of nine. And when I was nine, my bedroom and my bathroom were baby blue. And I didn't pick that. I just went through the chart you know, as, as the colors came up and used them as they came up. And that really mattered a lot when I got down here to Yahushua, Yahua, or Yahushua and found it was in purple. And I was like, oh, how cool is that? He picked the royal color just for himself because I didn't plan that. Um, I got the shalom here. You know what that's significant, by the way, that your name or anybody's name is any, any table? Uh, first of all, there's probably nobody in the world doing codes that's ever looked for this access term and then 5G, right? You, yeah. my dear sister, are probably the only person living person in all of the 7 billion people on the planet. I was, yeah. Right. That's and right. Big. Your name right, is right, right at there. the bottom of the access term. Yeah. So right at the bottom of it. To, to, to search your name in any table that you find, because what you're going to find is a connection many times, about 99% of the time, you're going to find a connection to you. Why? I think this is significant. I think you will makes it personalized mm -hmm. so that you realize He's showing you something, right? So it's not, yeah. it's not you know, uh, something that we're, we're, you're bragging about. My, my name's in the Bible because you're nothing. Um, a lot of detail is, but when you're searching things out and you're probably the only person in the world and then your name is right there, I think you would say, hey, this is for you. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm thankful that you said it and I didn't because I didn't want to brag on that, but I, I did not uh, really sometimes it can go the other way sometimes people can be like oh look at me i'm all in the bible codes i'm uh, i'm a prophet you got it so we don't want to do that but it's okay to sh show you your name and i'm about to show you mine in, in a hillary clinton table where it's right there it, it's it's no question and so uh, i think it's a tag that you is saying you this is like you. No mark. Seen this ever right it's like Thank you're you. on the right track exactly yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, sealed also kind of wraps the code. Sealed is Shin Tet Resh and Closed Mem. And it starts um, Mem. Um, oh, crud. And I'm lost. I can't see my own code. Thank you, Tom. I just finished labeling it today. <laughs> there. Yes. What is the relevancy, in your words, and what is the relevancy between 5G technology and armor? 
Well, I think she's, um, she's, I mean, I, I'm speaking for her, but I think it's cleared. I mean, the armor of Yahuwah would be enough to protect you from it, or the anointing of Yahuwah is the same thing, to protect you from this um, technology, you know? Yeah. Yahuwah, Yahuwah he, he hid uh, Elijah with the Holy Spirit. I, 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 I truly believe that it means that as long as we wear our armor faithfully every day, we're going to be protected from whatever thoughts they try to put into us. And I think that it is a form of mind control. Yeah. Um, and that being said, that, that it, I, I can't deny it looking at this, the odds of 5G technology being in a code that close the armor of Yahuwah. I just can't help but think that we're going to be protected. Yeah. They've got very sophisticated uh, stuff that they're doing in the military. The voice of God stuff has been out since the first Gulf War, guys. You know how they made all those Iraqis drop their weapons and surrender in the middle of the desert? It's because of technology. They were beaming down on them uh, in Arabic. This is, this is Allah. Give up to the Americans, right? That's out there. That's been out there for decades. Psychological warfare. Where they can put a voice in your head, right? Some, some, some airman in some um, van somewhere speaking into a microphone and it's projecting into inside your head. Yes. MK I was just doing some research on that. Remember that woman who... Um, accused one of the, the uh, Supreme Court justices, uh, I forget what her name was, Fredrickson or something like that. She actually was part of the CIA um, task force on that particular technology. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing to me. It was amazing to me. They, they make your organs have a, each have a voice. Yeah, they can do some wicked stuff to you. They can make you feel like your insides are, are, are on fire and cooking. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Disbursement weapons, uh, you know, these, these um, directed energy, uh, sonic. I'm not talking about the laser stuff where they're burning things, but the sonic energy, the sonic sound waves and the frequencies, um, modulation. They use them in crowd dispersals for riots now, yeah. the sound, high-pitched oh. sound and all that. And, and look at how close they are to being perpendicular. The the five G technology and the helmet, not one hundred percent perpendicular, but they're real close. And and that that and completely equidistant, but real close to being equidistant. I just I think the whole thing was just really telling that we're protected. I, I really do. Um, Believers are not going to have a need for um, temple hats and things like that. It's nonsense. I'm not going to take you. The armor will. Yeah. And Molly, were there a lot of um, choices when you picked uh, 55? Were there a lot of... Uh, no, there was only four. Four. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. In the whole Tanakh, there were only four. Okay, wow. And uh, I did go through the other three, and they were, they were respectable, but um, I, 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 I chose this one because it was it had the most. Mm -hmm. hmm. I would have chosen it because it's got the fives in it. It's yeah. got the fives? He, he's talking about the fives, and it's a good point he's making. 5G? It's 5G. Yeah. Five, five. They all had 5G in them. All four of them. No, but I mean, this one is a skip of 5.5. Five. Yeah. That's true. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Hmm. Yeah. That's a critical, it's a, from the things I read, it's a critical component of the, uh, of the deception that's coming up. They're trying to push that into all the Western nations. It's a very powerful signal. It can see through walls. It's a surveillance level 
signal, it is so fast. Yeah. I, carry, I carry a gadget with me. This um, blue shield. When I go out, I turn it on. This produces a scalar kind of wave, a Tesla kind of a wave. You can't protect yourself from 5G with um, lead paint around your buildings, etc. It will go straight through all that stuff. Your cells listen to this signal because that's what they talk to each other with. I don't even know if it's real. I got it from um, Nexus, um, but I bought it. It's not cheap. I've got one that does the whole house, and I've got this little one that does three metres. I take with me when I go out. Well done. Well, that is just a fabulous table. I wear a Bluetooth, and I think that might have had a little something to why I, I was curious, because scientifically that's very, very unhealthy, but it's so much more convenient on my job to be able to talk and be hands-free. Yeah. So I, I started wearing it, and that's how I listen to prophecies. That's how I listen to... It, it worked. That's how I do everything. And, and I think in a, in a part, it was a little selfish. I wanted to know, hey, uh, you know, safe am I doing this? And so I don't worry anymore. I don't worry at all. Well, that's good. Um, well, we got Yahushua in here. Uh, he showed up 16 times. I had a very difficult time him out and that was a very uncomfortable feeling but we've got him at a skip of seven got him at a skip of 13 up here and I think the other one is one of the ones that I ended up getting frustrated and I started blocking out letters because I just made the brain freeze um, this one down here that you can barely see that's protection and that's in the light pink and that runs my name and right there at the bottom corner so we do have protection um het gimmel nun het right here and so i i do and it crosses right there through the 5G, it even shares the G from 5G. Get the gimbal going through there. What did you say so, that was? Protection, het, gimbal, none, het. Where did you get that, just so I know, because it's not my clients. Brother Michael. Okay, it in. And sure enough, shares that gimmel. So, um, put your armor on and be confident. Thank you for letting me share. Good table, uh, sister. Thank good you. Yeah, really good work, Molly. Great work, Molly. Awesome. Very good, sister Molly. Thank you, everyone. I hear Brother Scott's here. <laughs> Shalom, Brother hey, Scott. Hey, Shalom, hey, Brother Shalom, Scott. Everybody. Mr. Scott. Hey, Shalom, Harry. Shalom, Shalom. Um, now that you're here, do you mind if I share what we were going to share? I can I can start out and then I could lead you into what Brother Scott. Do you have your uh, t uh, stuff ready or? Uh, I've, uh, yeah, I've I've got well, my tables up. I was thinking maybe I could kind of show mine first because we were just kind of piggybacking off of each. This way we can kind of show everyone how everything kind of began, unless you want to go ahead. Well, I just wanted to show the statistical 
and the very, sure. that very small table where you where you see and sure i sure. just wanted to show that then i was going to lead into what you had to say because i know that but this is kind of technical i wanted to show the technical part. absolutely go right ahead because your annotations are a lot easier to, to read so very good uh okay that's not it there we go can you see the this Um, I just want to say, I, I looked that up, uh, Molly, I might have misunderstood you. It's a hey, Gimmel, nun, hey. Hey, Gimmel, nun, hey. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Sister Darla. Yeah, I just want to make that, because um, I misunderstood the spelling maybe, but I want to make sure in case it goes public that we have it spelled right. Okay. Uh, what is this? Can you see this, the statistical stuff here? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, all right, Brother Scott approached me with a search term that he found, and, it, and it's such in a very profound place. Um, it's New, New York City, and I have this statistical value from Torosoft in here, and it's noon, yod, wav, yod, Wav Resh Kuf. And that you'll find in Ezekiel chapter 7, between verses 4 and 5. And in Torah Soft, if you look at a word, you'll be able to see the p value in this is here. And the p value for this is very low. And that's what you want when you're looking for something. Now, this is just one word. Um, the p-value of this is uh, 0. 0.000325. It's really, really, that, that means it's highly unlikely that that's there by accident. Okay. Now, the skip frequency of this, the odds of this showing up in, in the uh, Bible codes is like 35,200,000 to 1. So wow. this, this is, and you, it's only at a very small skip too. Uh, 93, wow. Yeah. There's a skip of like 16, I believe. Oh. There you go, yeah. So you have Nun Yod, Wav Yod, Wav Resh Kuf. You'll find that in a very, this is a, a ULS of 14 this table and it's running right through the abhorrence, the, the, uh, the abominations of you. And you have, and if in code you have a uh, city up top and, and of course this has to do with Russia and judgment. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now I'll just hand this over to brother Scott so he can show his stuff. Just, I wanted to set this up properly so you can see, uh, st the statistical part of this and why it's, why it's so um, uh, very strong in the codes. So I'll just stop sharing and go ahead, take it away. <laughs> well, you did have another very good table with that as well. Maybe you could show that again here in a little bit, but yeah, I will. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen and just kind of show everyone how this kind of began. Uh, shalom, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Very good presentation, Molly. Very good work. Very encouraging to see that. Um, oops. All right. Can you guys uh, see my screen? Yes. Uh, okay. Um, uh, here, you guys are going to see that code laid out uh, linearly or in a linear fashion uh, up here in Ezekiel 7, 4 through 6. What's really amazing is, uh, um, as Brother Chris showed, you're going to have the word city 
in the same verse, and you're also going to have the United States of America in the same verse over here with this Aleph, this Aleph, Resh, Hey, Bet. Um, we, I, I had gotten together with Chris after Monday's class, and we instantly just started um, ping-ponging um, back and forth with, with search terms and everything. He, he has a very much more detailed table. Um, this table I have in a lot more detail. This is just kind of bare bones. There's a lot of really good um, plain text scripture in here uh, that go through other ELS terms. Um, I, I left it a little, this one a little bit bare just so everyone can see some basic structure. Uh, this is at a page width of 120, which is something I always do when, when I go into a specific area of scripture because 120 characters will fit inside my screen perfectly without going uh, a column out, outside of either margin. Um, and 120 is just, as everybody knows, is a very interesting and profound number. Um, but uh, at a, a skip of 120, you're going to see um, this word atomic right here going vertically. You're also going to see the word missile in the middle here, and you're also going to see the word holocaust right next to it going vertically. Uh, that's very interesting because this is based off of the very, this is a very popular idea that New York is a target. I and mean, we're not trying to prophesy doomsday stuff. Right, right. There's been there's been people who have been having visions and dreams about this for decades. I've heard about this back in the 2000s. Right. It's yeah. a very popular idea from from a lot of different circles, and it's a very common it's a common thread thing. Um, and you know, recently we've all seen the uh, that video of that Russian choir, you know, singing Gregorian chant <laughs> about destroying New York. You know, I don't think that was done so they could have a, a pop chart hit, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, there's some really interesting anomalies here as well. For instance, going through here, this area, we have USA, which is also in a very profound spot in that scripture. Running vertically, you're going to have this word rain, um, mem, tet, resh, and then blood, uh, dalit, mem, raining blood, right vertically with the word atomic. And it made me, instantly it made me think of, uh, what is that, Revelation 8, the, the opening, or the, the first trumpet. Fire mixed with say, blood. Yes, and I'm not saying that's what's going to take place in the order of events or what have you, but, you know, I would imagine that in a nuclear situation, um, things are going to turn to wormwood. Yeah. Rain like, like blood, right? Over here, vertically, you have the word wormwood, and you have the word ruachot, spirits, right above it. Spirits of wormwood. Spirits. Spirits of Wormwood. Well, you know, um, when Wormwood happens, right, this is when the pit, what comes out of the pit? Spirits. Right. Unclean spirits. And what does it say in Deuteronomy 29? Wormwood shows up first. Deuteronomy 29? Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Deuteronomy... My computer's slow. Go ahead, Scott. I'm gonna I might look up 29 and see what uh, Dawn was talking about. 29 what? 16 to 18. 16 to 18, which, 18. which is, uh, for you know now we have lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through in the midst of the nations through which you passed. Moreover, you have seen the abominations of the idols of wood, stone, silver, and gold, which they had with them, so that they there are... So there are 
not be among you a man or a woman or family or tribe whose heart turns away from Yahuwah, your Elohim, to go and serve those gods of those nations, that there will not be among you a root bearing poisonous fruit and wormwood. Mm. And it shall be when he hears the words of this curse that he will boast, saying, I will have peace, I have peace though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart in order to destroy the watered land with the dry. Mm. Mm. So it's a part of a curse. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, uh, there's, uh, it's a physical manifestation, uh, um, you know, regardless of what man does, you know, you, is, he's, this is his show, you know, he, he, he pulls the strings. Um, but uh, also horizontally here, you're gonna have the word missiles. Wow. In the same, in wow. the same verse, in the same verse where you'll see, I will make the land desolate in the plain text. Um, and then, um, here, running through these three vertical terms, you're going to have um, uh, Ezekiel 7.27, the king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed in desolation. That's where you'll see that. Running through those three terms there, clothed in desolation. And the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. And I will do unto them after their way, according to their deserts will I judge them, and they shall know that I am Yahuwah. Mm. Um, it's very, very profound. Um, it's an ominous warning. Yeah. Oh, in the same line, uh, I don't have it annotated, but in the plain text, make a chain for the land is full of bloody crimes and the city is full of violence. Now, I lived in, short, uh, in New York City for a short time. I grew up right outside of that city for the first 25 years of my life. It is a very violent city. <laughs> So you're going to see that in plain text, city of violence. Yeah. You know, and in the Adam and Eve story, uh, the, the, uh, the, the CIA, it's a, it's a book about the coming catastrophe on the earth that was seized by the CIA and um, heavily redacted and sanitized. And in that, it talks about New York would be under, I think, over a mile of mud or something like that. It's going to be completely buried. Um, but we know why it's because of the sin of that, of that city. Um, the unredacted version is going to bounce on YouTube. Yeah. And it, by the way, you can get that book and the, the whole book, but it's like $2,100 <laughs> on, on the internet to get the whole version of that and see what the CIA removed out of it. They certainly felt threatened with that information back in the sixties. Uh, New, New York city is, uh, uh, place of tra uh, world trading and and it has a lot to do with the economy and um uh there's well right right in chapter set ezekiel 7 you have verse 19 where it says he'll people will be throwing their silver in the streets and he's gonna take the gold away this is in the same context as, as this by these Bible codes that we're actually talking about the sin, the sins of greed and, and worshiping mammon. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, this, <laughs> it, this doesn't come with any joy to ha kind of have to present something like this It's very, absolutely not uh, disturbing, mm -hmm. very moving. Um, yeah, but you know, it's important but it, that people see that you can ex extract um, facts, truth, and uh, you know even sometimes there are um, randomness that that's in there. But I don't think that's the case with this. I think it's clearly showing us something. It has structure. It's in a very small area. Um, I mean, you got things in the same line as I will make desolate, and it gives you the answer. What what makes desolate? Right. Well, you go to Zechariah 5 and you, t you hear all about it. It's those things that fly across the face of the earth, um, right? Missiles. Right. What is that? That's yeah. a missile. Is Zechariah is describing a missile when he talks about um, flying you know, cubits high and five cubits wide. Yes. When, you go, when you look at that, a Megillah, that's a missile. 
right? And, and you know, to have inside where where this code is encoded inside these two or three verses, uh, I think it spans um, verses four through six. You're going to have city, and you're going to have the United States of America. Yeah. In the same verse, in with the same code, with a seven-letter term, it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. Scott, so, how are you spelling? And, how are you spelling the word atomic? There is it. Uh, that is uh, uh, Aleph Mem, Aleph Mem, Vav, Aleph Tau, Aleph Tau. That's right, Aleph Tau, Vav Mem Yod. Olive Tau, Bob Memyod. Okay. And that's exactly so, how Gladerson spells it. Yeah. Yep. I found that word in the database. Mm -hmm. So w with that, I have a very another brief table just to show real quick. I have a, I have it. Um, I have a very much more detailed table, but I, I kind of just so it's not so cluttered. Uh, it's just uh, it's going to make it easier to, to show. Uh, I um, same thing. Very shocking, um, powerful, and moving uh, subject matter. Um, this came up at a skip of uh, 1978 in Ezekiel again. Um, this one's at a skip of uh, 989, which would be half of 1978. And um, I kind of went off on a tangent after I after I saw that New York term, and your axis term is going to be here with this mem going up, mem vav tau, death, aleph resh, hey bet, United States of America. Going over top of it, starting here down at this pay, pay yod, mem. Aleph in the same column that's FEMA mm. okay again stacked on top of that you're gonna have this word Shin Vav Aleph Hey Holocaust mm -hmm. all in the same vertical column yeah now, that's, that's significant. there's yes. a there's there's a large po uh, population of Jews right in New York City mm. Notice Again, the correctness of this, guys. How the, how these are you got vertical terms that are sandwiched together, very closely woven in with each other, and then you know he's got some other vertical anomalies there. Uh, that's all significant. That's showing a structure. Uh, and if you think about it, each line that that is going across horizontally, the verses, the chapters that that is going around a cylinder. Each that cylinder had to be just right for each one of those letters to fall in the same column, right? That's right. It, 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 it boggles my mind. I don't even know how to put it in perspective of how amazing that is that, that you'll have terms that have come together like that in such a place, in such a way. In other words, you know, monkeys jumping on your, on your keyboard for a thousand years will never produce something like this. And that's where they no. get the term mon monkey text. Right, the randomness of 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 a, of a chimpanzee jumping on a keyboard, it doesn't happen. No, uh, you, which you really amazing struck is by lightning a thousand times consecutively before something like this happened on accident. Right, every day for a year straight. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's really amazing is when uh, when I put the row skip in, yeah, at the perfect skip over here, you're going to have the same axis term. Except without the vav, you'll just have the mem tau ala fresh hey bet. It's the same term at a perfect skip, where this is at a at a row skip of two. Um, that kind of blew my mind. Plus, uh, this word for holocaust here, starting at the shin, you'll have the word holocaust again, sharing the same shin going this way horizontally, mm -hmm. and it. It's sharing the word hey with this term here, starting from the bottom at this tet going up. That's the word missile, tet yod, lamid. And this is the word for panic or crisis, mem, hey, bav, mem, hey. Missile crisis. 
missile crisis. Wow. Um, and it, it really blew my mind because this, this arrived after we, um, uh, Chris and I had worked on that other table in Ezekiel. It just seemed like the spirit just like shifted gears and automatically we were where I had been looking for these Kushner anomalies in, in Micah and, and what have you and some other things. All of a sudden it was just, he, he just put us in Ezekiel and I've got about oh, a half a dozen other tables with similar search terms. And I have to tell you, it's, it's like I said, it's really a uh, strong, uh, powerful results. Very, very small P values. Um, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's moving and disturbing, but, uh, you can't turn your face from, from the truth of the matter. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I guess I don't know what else I have to say about that. You know, uh, did you, do you want, did you want me to show that other table with the annotation? Sure. On it? Sure. Go ahead, Chris. Uh, I'm going to go quick, ahead and stop sharing my screen. I got a question. question. Sure. Sure. If I understood correctly, that's not based on a uh, the usual searching of an access term, but simply the sorting in, uh, by 120 of, yeah. a, of a, a chapter or something. Well, well, yeah, you can you can in, in these <sighs> I programs. I, I know in Keys, you can you can go to a certain area, any area you want in the scripture and open up a field of text at a specified skip or page width to your, to your wanting. And then you can go ahead and put in terms mm -hmm. and they may not come up vertically. I mean, it's good to have a vertical term that serves as an access term so that you can give people kind of like a compass. Yeah. And it gives yeah. you your set cylinder. Yeah. So yeah. What, right. what, what Chris and, and, and Scott has done just to kind of sum that up is they've gone another round instead of, you know, putting in an access term and it shows them, it, okay, here it is in Ezekiel. They're just going to Ezekiel and seeing what they can find, right? It's not they a shot in the dark. It at 120 yeah. in this case. Yeah, and that takes a lot of being yeah. led by the Spirit and, and understanding, okay, so, so you're setting in the parameters of, of a cylinder width of 120. And let's just say any cylinder width is going to have access terms because that's, yeah, what, that's what he's that. got. Mm -hmm things encoded is in every yeah. cylinder width is going to have something. Um, so the fact that they it's, another, here, it's another structure of coding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even though it is still, it is still ELS mm -hmm. because the terms you're looking for, are, but instead of searching for an access term and finding related topics, we're taking a section of plain text and resorting it. Right. Good. You could get the same results awesome. if 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 I decided to take a piece of graph paper and a Tanakh and transcribe it myself no, manually. I understand, and, I understand. No problem. Yeah, let's say I wanted awesome. to do the whole chapter of Ezekiel seven in pen on graph paper at a at a width of a hundred characters. It might take some time, but yeah. I will get the same exact results. That's how you do. You would be able to do it by hand. That's probably how exactly. they were doing it by hand thousands of years ago. Exactly, and that's I think that's the best way to do it. It's a manual search. It means it's, you're basically doing it by hand. You don't know if it's there or not. Some it may be there. It may not be there. But because you got the Holy Spirit leading you, uh, chances are you're going to find something. Uh, if, if there's a spirit leading you and you don't find anything, you know, then chances are you that's you know, not the Holy Spirit because it's going to Holy Spirit's going to lead you to all truth. Right, and so it'll lead you to these things that are concealed uh, in in Ezekiel and other places, Isaiah fifty three. You know about the Yeshua. Um, all these things can be found in, in the back door uh, way of searching. I call it a reverse reverse searching because I mean that that's basically what we're doing. We're just doing it in reverse order. We're starting from the scripture and then working ELSs instead of doing a cert, uh, uh, an access term and finding the scripture and in with the access term. Uh, I actually have another table I'm going to show that that actually will 
show a little bit more of that. Uh, but I wanted to wrap this up with what we were looking at about New York. Wow. And actually, there's another, I think there's another, there's a couple of the entries where it says city here along the same line. But you have Missile, and here you have New York, Nguyen, Yod, Wav, Yod, Wav, Resh, Kuf. And then in there you have USA. But also, if you look even longer, you'll have the word to Russia or before Russia coded along there. So there's an, there's an association with this, with Russia and New York City. And the access term of this is Trident. And that is, oh gee, what was the LS? 326. So if you were to set your table at, at a page width of 326, you would see Trident there. And you have, uh, that's Kuf Lamed Shin Wav Yod. And right there, we're in, in Brother Scott's table where it said Missile. Look where it sits right next to Trident. And you have uh, uh, that. What was that word again? Uh, Zadi pay explosion. 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 Yeah. And then you have uh, the year, the actual year, fifty-seven eighty, with no other letter to finish that uh, a letter sequence to make it like fifty-seven eighty-one or anything like that. Nothing relevant. So we were able to see that it's, it's pretty close. And then you have from Cyrus. What this could be is uh, a retaliation, a retaliatory type of uh, action after. But whatever happens, you know, it could be um, Iran. And by the way, they have over 50 submarines um, that they got from China and Russia. Okay, so they well, can't fire Trident type or Polaris type missiles. And if you didn't know, Trident is a particular type of missile fired from a submarine. So, yeah, the the EFA that's mentioned in Zechariah five, it's, it says it's it's covering the whole earth. So you know, all these different nations really have their own variation for a forty liter container. Um, here I actually have submarine here. Um, now, Russia just launched the world's largest submarine, the, the Belgorod. Belgorod. It's interesting. The first word on there is bell, which is interesting. But they're able to launch a robotic torpedo called the Status 6 to torpedo. And it's <laughs> un uncanny that uh, Jonathan Gleck has folds the dollar bill or whatever over and you see the wave coming up against the, the uh, Empire State Building or whatever it is and that this here is is what they plan on doing and strategically this would be a better way of taking out a city than than just nuking it because of the the radiation you'd still have a radiated area and all the water uh, that that exploding this in the, in the ocean would not only that, it would, it would, it, but it would still be a it, it would be more contained and you could do it undetected yeah so yeah even, well see that's that's the other thing russia does not have a preemptive military plan it's stri strictly defensive that they think that uh they're going to be attacked they, they'll wait until they're attacked first so they would but the United States has a preemptive uh, military plan, which means if they think that they're going to be attacked, they'll attack first. Yeah. So this, this to me, it sounds more like uh, a retaliatory, but it's a surprise. That would be the only way that you would be able to get a, a, a nuclear ordinance to explode as if without a preemptive is through a surprise attack. It's my my uh, guesstimation on that, anyways. Submarines are very capable of a surprise attack, mm -hmm. guys. They could put them things just a couple of miles offshore, off of Baltimore, and there, there, listen. There's no anti-missile battery anywhere that's going to stop a barrage from from Soviet 
submarines or Iranian submarines. But, you know, most warheads on a Soviet submarine is multiple warheads. So you got one missile with, with 24 warheads inside of it, right? That's overwhelming barrage. You mm. may get one or two of those missiles shot down, but for the most part, the rest are going to hit their target. You're not going to stop them. Yeah. And yeah, that, was the, that was the prophecy of Dim Dimitri Dudeman 20-some uh, years ago, too. That's right. Yeah. And that, that particular submarine that he's talking about, if you read the article, that submarine makes the Red October look like a midget. It is profoundly, and there's some pictures, and you could tell just by the pictures. Now, pictures never do anything any justice. But when you look at the cranes that are sitting by it, it is phenomenally huge. I, I, it's, it's, just, it's just shocking how they can construct something like that. It's an, an underwater city. It, it is. It's, it, it is. It is an underwater city. And, you know, these torpedoes, they, they travel at mock speeds underwater. I, that is, I mean, to, that's, that's just yeah. crazy. That's, that's yeah, insane. They, they, what they do is they, uh, these ones here are, are not like that, but they do have the, the one missiles. It'll, it'll, uh, uh, it, it travels through a bubble, it causes a bubble to form in the front of it. So they use uh, steam, a, ro a rocket engine in the front of it. As it opens up a bubble, there's no resistance. So it could just travel literally at mock speed underwater. Um, but any, anyways, I, I wanted to kind of switch now to what uh, Brother Terrence was asking about how to how um, we're looking in the codes, doing the re reverse lookup. Um, I'm, we're, I'm looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28. And a while back, I did uh, a limited search on the word comet. I wanted to find all, this, all the ELS entries of uh, 10 or minus. And I found comet in the plain text encoded in quite a few pieces of scripture. Uh, specifically in, in Deuteronomy 28, it's actually talking about um, 28, 22, and you who I shall smite thee with a consumption, with a fever, and with an inflammation, with an extreme burning, and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron and you shall make the rain of thy land pow powder and dust from heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed and right in here in verse 24 you have the word comet or actually 23 and 24 if wow. shin bet yo tet now what i did is i opened up you can use this yellow button here and you can open it up and you go you can go right to Deuteronomy and it'll open up the the Hebrew script here and you change you change it to chapter 2824 and you put in comet you'll find it at an ELS of uh, seven as you can see here, that's the very first entry that I started with. I didn't start with an access term. I started with the scripture first. And then from there, I, I started putting things in and playing around with the, the, the page width. This here is at a page width of 93. And this table specifically, I found, uh, we found uh, Elon Musk in here. And this is talking about a, a judgment from the heavens. And that's what we're, we're heading into in, in uh, Revelation chapter 8. And just before I get into that, you can see that Elon Musk was called to help solve uh, 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 asteroid collision scenarios. And they just had a planetary defense conference uh, in April. So they're, they're very aware. They won't tell you that they know that Yahuwah is about to judge the earth. And this is really what this is about. It's, 
Uh, man's arrogant, thinking that he's going to avoid a judgment f from our Heavenly Father. So they have plans to try and uh, take out uh, a planet, possible planetary collision from an extra uh, near, near, they don't even call it comet or asteroid anymore. They call it a near Earth object. And being, they're being politically correct. But uh, here you have the word comet, Shin Bet, Yo Tet. But right here you have Elon. Aleph, Yod, Lamed, Wav, Nun, and Musk right here. Uh, Mem, Yod, Samak, Kaf. Now we tried to search it with the, the Kuf, uh, but it, ca it actually, the Kuf and the Kaf. I, I, um, Brother Scott and I agree it should be a Kaf and not a Kuf. Um, but you have the word from missile right here attached to his name right here. And again, you have Elon running this way, Aleph, Yod, Lama, Wav, Nun. And it's interesting that you have the Aleph from Elon and the Shin from Comet, and look what it spells, fire. And uh, then up here you have uh, Russia going this way. Uh, Resh, Wav, Samak, Yod. And again here, Russia. Uh, Ra Resh, Wav, Samak, Yod. Right in here. And then you have the word atomic right here coming together with Russia right up here. And you have before America. Now, <laughs> it's interesting that these two nations are about to go to war with each other, but yet... If there, were, if there was a planetary threat, these, these are the two major nations that would be working together to try and thwart a, a threat, which is bizarre. Uh, now, in here, you'll have Aram, Arami, or Aramoy. It's, uh, it's, that's actually taken from uh, the Aramaic from... Uh, uh, Revelation 6.13, and also uh, the one video that I did about about a comet <laughs> uh, or an asteroid possibly impacting in that area. And it's no coincidence my name is there, Kaf Resh Yod Samak. So you have my name and Arami together with uh, Mem Yod He Wav He from Yahuwah messenger um and then you have judgment here so that's interesting that it all come kind of comes together in a bit a bit um but elon musk over here that's <laughs> that's really interesting but this is this is the product of uh, reverse searching so you can you can actually start with uh, something that you see in the plain text. Say you're doing a large table with like a few thousand uh, character page width, and you see something in there. Well, you can check out which piece of scripture it is, and then you can open it up, whichever book it is, it's in. In here, you can pull up the scripture, and then you can actually start to open up your English, open up the matrix. The matrix view is always at a default of 50. So whatever you're searching, it'll always be 50. And then you can come up here. You can change your page width and play around with it and search for stuff and see what, what else will, will uh, cross or, or be laid in with uh, the, that entry. So, um, and you can't guaranteed you're going to find stuff because it's such a, at a low ELS and it's all going to be relevant. Like, look where it is. It's right in the middle of the cur curses in Deuteronomy 28. This is one, one of the curses along with Wormwood. Is, uh, and I do believe that this, this event 
at the beginning of uh, Revelation 8 is to end a war, end the, Z the Ezekiel 38 war. It really, if the United States of America and, and Russia actually got into a nuclear exchange, uh, I, this world would not survive. It would perish. And our Heavenly Father would, is definitely going to intervene in order to stop that from happening because other things in Bible prophecy have to happen. So I believe our Heavenly Father is going to, this is, this is not only a judgment, but he's intervening to keep mankind from destroying himself in a nuclear war. Yeah, and the days not be short and all the flesh will be destroyed. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, um, you know, because we dropped, in, uh, you know, two nuclear weapons on Japan, um, and the scriptures say that, that Yahuwah is, um, you don't connect and die, which is measure for measure, like the scales of justice, that we're due. We're due to attacks um, in the borders of the United States. Was not military structures that we striked. It was mostly, for the most part, 99% men, women, and children, old and young. Innocence was not military uh, targets that we hit. So the justice in that would be what? Well, two for the United States. Yeah. Uh, we can't uh, I, uh, I did not check to see if the armor of Yahuwah would prevent, protect you against a nuclear explosion. I don't think I would want to push my luck. Yeah. I think the father is going to have us where he wants us when that happens. And it's probably, here's the thing. If you look at the different regions of the United States, you, if you're, if you're an American, and sometimes if you're not, you know, you, maybe you know America a little bit, you know about New York and Las Vegas, right? Or San Francisco. These are more wicked na uh, cities in our nation than, than others. Let's say than, um, you know, what's a, what's a Bible Belt city? Um, Macon, Georgia, you know, heavily Southern Baptist and things like that. Not ideally a wicked city. I'm not saying wickedness don't happen there, but there are exponentially more wicked cities in the nation, right? I would think that this would be where that judgment falls. Okay, yeah. East Coast, West Coast, uh, Los Angeles, New York City. The two, the I would think. Well, the word city, the word city also means watcher. These are why watcher cities. <laughs> yeah. from the follow ones. They're the ones who are controlling these cities. Um, I just wanted to make mention before we move on about Revelation 8. Uh, this, this here is, uh, is from a sensor that's being thrown at the earth from the, th from the throne, literally. It, it's not something that uh, they're going to see coming. It's going to come suddenly because if you look at the way that they've uh, designed uh, some of the processes they think may work in order to uh, push a near-Earth object out of the way slowly, none of those things are going to be able to work if it just all of a sudden shows up at the front door and says, here I am. <laughs> they're going to have to, new that's the only way that they're going to have any chance of, of, of averting most of the disaster is by, by blowing it up with nukes. It's going to be that sudden. That's right. Just wanted to point that out. Sorry, I didn't mean I'm going to cut you off, my sister. No, no, by all means, it's your presentation. I was just, uh, that Dallas code was pretty startling also. That's an inner city practically in the center of Texas, and, and it's bad up there. And yeah. they're... They're getting storms. The storms that have been rolling through Dallas are just amazing. Yep. That's also where the abortion started in the United States. Roe v. Wade yep. started in Dallas County. Absolutely. Uh, very wicked city. I experienced it firsthand. Very strong, heavy um, spiritual presence there. I, I, I sensed it was mammon. Um, and probably a few others, but definitely money is worshipped in that city. You can see it everywhere uh, in the lifestyles and material things that people have. They, they have a very large uh, gold reserve 
in Dallas. And yeah. the, I, I, I believe that Russia, they're, they're hurting financially. They got no money. That's why you see this stuff going on in Venezuela. They're trying to uh, take the gold, take the resources. And, and uh, so they're, they're having a huge, hard, hard, really hard. I mean, the, the only reason why people are in the military in Russia is because they get a, three square meals a day. They're not getting paid. Hardly anybody's getting paid in Russia because they don't have any money. Sooner or later, it's they're 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 going to act. And one of the best ways to uh, make their gold more valuable overnight: nuke America's gold. You've got four Makes docks. Sense, you've got a gold. It? You've got a gold reserve in in New York. You've got a gold reserve in Dallas. You've got gold reserves all over the place. So they 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 have targets on them. Sounds like a Bond movie. Yeah, James mm -hmm. Bond. Except it's reality. Yeah. All right, guys, I want to take you back to some tables that was worked back in 2015 and early 2016 before the election. This is before Trump was even elected. Um, Hillary Clinton just got you know, the bomb dropped on her with um, the email stuff and destroying BlackBerry phones and all of that had just come out. And this is uh, a table that emerged from one of the, the rabbis. And then I took, took it from there and worked it a little more. But look at, I want you to notice the detail of this. In hindsight of the truth that we know, we know that Comey did some covering up. We know that Hillary got, got away with it. Um, and I want you to see how it's reflected in this this code, very small area, 513. The access term is they made use of their foundation. That is all of these letters that is vertical here. Now inside, inside they made use of their foundation, right? You have the word servers, email servers. She had her own servers in her house and look, it's reflecting that. Then we got computer, the computers, Judgment right up under there. Hillary's name is here a few times. Uh, emails. Notice how emails is vertical right with um, that long term. And then cascading down just a little bit further, you have the, the term Comey has covered up. This is found after the fact. This is, this is found as the story is developing, right? Manual searching. You can see the name Comey. And then you find an extension on it has covered up. Oh, wow. Is that an accident that just happened to be there? No. This is something that's been concealed for 3,400 years in the scriptures of a modern day event or a set of ser series of events, cr crimes committed by Hillary with her servers and, and such. America is in here a couple of times. But notice up, up at the top, I told you earlier, uh, sometimes you'll be able to find your own name in some of this. And I, I did in the plain text, Jonathan and the year in the very same line, just in reverse. Hey, Tav, Shin, Ein, Vav, 2016 in the same line. I wasn't the only one that found, you know, this it was uh, actually rips, professor rips. Uh, but I did take it and work it a little further, uh, finding Obama's name in there and some, and some other things. Um, and then of course, we go to, um, let me stop here. This next one, uh, which is Hillary is corrupt. That is the access term and a lot of information there. Same thing. Could you, you know, compact on each sharing letters, all kinds of stuff going on here. We got the year 2016. Hillary is corrupt. Debbie Wasserman Schultz right here, connecting to the shin in, in this uh, access term. Bill is here a few times. we got Bill, Bill down here, and his ladder in. I found this really interesting that running right through Bill's name uh, is possibly, quite possibly, how he will meet his end, which is in a deathbed, withering away with sores and boils. That's basically what that says. Um, just the son of blood. Um, treason runs through there. Emails also vertical in there leaked the word leaked uh behold an interview um and then in the plain text the the wise men of babylon see 
Now, who are the wise men of Babylon? You know, who the, you know who the Majid are? The Majid? The Majid are where we get the three wise men that came from Babylon looking for Yeshua, right? These are some people that studied the stars. They studied things and was able to, to see into the future, right? The wise men of Babylon see. Don't know that it means anything, but look, it's right there as if it, it's connected. Who that is, I don't know. Hillary's name here several times um, uh, as an ELS, but also her last name in an interesting conjunction. So we got Rodham, her maiden name, Rodham, with secrets of warfare that is stacked on top of each other right there. So she, as her position dictated, right, secretary, she had access to all this kind of stuff. Um, here's something really interesting. We found in uh, this particular verse, chapter and verse that runs through here, the word murders. It's also in the plain text here. Now, what is not in this particular PDF, because uh, this is just one version of it. There's actually three, and that one I chose didn't have the actual updated stuff in there. But Seth Rich's name is encoded right there. Murdered. Anybody know anything about Seth Rich and that story and about all of this? Wow. Why is his name right there with murdered in the United States? Somebody walked wow. up to, to him in, in, in Washington and shot him in the back of the head on the streets. He was assassinated. There are many bodies that have followed the Clintons. I'm quite surprised that, that some people are still alive today that have come against the Clintons. But a lot of information about Hillary and her corruption in this table. Very small area, uh, less than 10,000, 9907 is is the complete cylinder width of this. Um, uh, the elections here, the word elections, um, judgment here several times, treason, um, another, another relevant term that's here. Uh, but, but you can see how they're structured here. This is not just a bunch of jumbled letters and things, right? We've got interaction and, and significant terms coming together in some of these places and, and, and playing a role uh, with what is in the in the plain text scripture, right? So, I just wanted you guys to be able to see um, that these codes do contain an incredible amount of detail and factual truth, and a lot of this is is found in real time, right? So, uh, you know, as it's breaking on the news, we're searching in in the codes, and we happen to find these things encoded, which leads us to believe, wow, this must be credible. Right? I don't think this is an accident. We're finding this stuff encoded um, in these scriptures. Um, so there you go. That's the two I had to talk about today. Several, uh, well, a couple of years old. I wouldn't say several. I started finding this stuff in 2015 when it was evident um, who was going to be running. And this is the result of that. Uh, so, yeah. Well, I, I certainly don't need any convincing but when you see a code with that level of detail, it's hard to imagine that anyone seeing that could not make them think, but it doesn't. You're right. You know, and it, it, it just boggles my mind that, that there's still some people out there to say, oh, you can find that in Moby Dick and Gone with the Wind. Yet there are no Moby Dick and Gone with the Wind YouTube channels. Right, they're doing codes in the Moby Dick because you can. By the way, it's it's in Code Finder. There are controlled text in there, the files that you can search. So if you want to go start a YouTube channel and search Moby Dick codes, by all means, please do. Show us some codes in Moby Dick like these. You're not going to find it. So those very same people who have a, an opinion about oh the Bible codes is a bunch of bunch of garbage, yada yada, ugh, never put one second of due diligence research and finding out if there's something to this, right? And the it, it, can, everybody should do that, right? We, wait a minute. What, what, if this is real, then it must mean that there's a divine being because he put it here. Absolutely. Man this man didn't know 3,400 years ago when the scriptures were, were there, all this would be right. Um, not even Nostradamus is that good, right? The odds of, of these anomalies all just happening random, just, you know, willy-nilly is astronomical. It is not going to happen. So uh, I agree. You, it should be people would be like, wow, what? 
but you know, it's like a veil is still there or something in, in their conscious where they just cannot go there. They just cannot say, okay, there's, for instance, Michael Drawson by book three guys, you would think Michael Drawson would be convinced that there is a divine being. No, in book three, he, he comes to the conclusion that there are green aliens in a far galaxy that wanted you to know the future of mankind and encoded a way for you to find out the future of mankind and change it. Vince, the book saving the planet or saving the world, whatever his title was, that was his conclusion. And this, this drove me to do what I'm doing today because I could not just couldn't equate that. What, what you, you thinking there's aliens? Oh my gosh. Somebody has got to, <laughs> so I set off to, to, you know, it just, it ate at me. Wait, wait a minute, guy. I certainly don't think it was aliens that did this. This has to be, this got to be the creator. What do you mean? There's no creator. He's an agnostic atheist. Uh, one or the other. I don't know, but yeah, he didn't come to the conclusion that there's a divine being that wanted us to find this. Um, and why, why is that? Was it demonstrates, I think it demonstrates what we are told about our nature. Yeah. We don't want to be accountable. We don't want to face up to it, so we reverse engineer the scenario to suit ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like this, this coding, from, is, is, the pattern is all through everything of his creation. It's a similar thing to the DNA. Yeah. When the DNA reassembles, it doesn't go one-on-one. -on -one. According to Chuck Missler, it takes bits here and bits there and reassembles it in like an ELS pattern. That's right. Well, people can't, uh, it's in everything, but they, it's they're denied. Actually, I'd like to ask a question. The other week I listened to a, a program that, because you hear all the people say that there's no real evidence about Yeshua. And in the, um, he was reading the letter that Pontius Pilate wrote back to Tiberius Caesar after the events. Mm -hmm. And he talked about him. Yeah. And he said, he's got golden hair and a golden beard. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I that, read is on, that is on the record in one of it was put into a library, I think in Jerusalem or Bethlehem and in the Vatican. You can also find the report of Caiaphas in the Talmud, guys. Did you know that? Caiaphas, after the crucifixion, came to the realization there's something different about we killed the Messiah, guys, because, you know, there was an earthquake. There was a, there was a very long eclipse, and the temple is destroyed, uh, well, damaged. You know, it, it, the earthquake can have done something to the doors where one of the doors would not remain closed, right? One of the menorahs would not stay lit, and the string stopped turning colors. There were several signs that happened in and around the crucifixion of Yeshua. Then the reports, by the way, that, wait a minute, he's not in the tomb anymore. There's Roman soldiers that swear on Caesar's grave that, that this, there's angels, and he come out of there. So all this compiling evidence in ancient times, you can find Caiaphas writing in the Talmud, 39B, I believe it is, where, where he records all of this and actually speaks uh, very positively. Now, then you can Next. read in the testimony of Nicodemus yes, yes. something that goes on with Caiaphas because something that happens when Yeshua comes out of, the, out of the grave, Caiaphas' dead son Samuel also come out, and there were witnesses that saw him and told Caiaphas, hey, your son's alive. We saw him. So Caiaphas wants to know more, and he sends for Nicodemus and in interrogates him, right? Even puts him in jail and miraculously angels transport him out of jail and back home, right? So there's this backline story of Caiaphas that nobody really knows about. But I think just like the centurion had a life-changing experience at Calvary, so did some of these people that were involved. Caiaphas, right? Yeshua said, Father, forgive him because he don't know what he's doing. This is when he's being nailed to the cross, right? He's invoking a amendment in Leviticus, which means that the ignorance of the congregation is not held against them. 
if they are sinning in ignorance, they're forgiven under, under mercy, right? And here we got Yeshua being nailed to the cross. Caiaphas is standing right there and he says, Father, forgive him. He don't know what they're doing, right? They're doing it out of ignorance. And then the rest, the, the earthquake, the, the eclipse, uh, all of these things that, that any sober-minded person living in that time would go, oh my, we just did something really bad. This is not a normal crucifixion here, guys, right? But and how, many, how many crucifixions did they, did they witness? Hundreds of thousands. In, in, yeah. in that year, I think it was 250,000 crucifixions under um, Pilate. That's a lot. I mean, they were, they were pretty much desensitized in, the, in the, you know, the brutality of it all. But then but I imagine that there would have been an awful lot of people then who would have realized, and that would have strengthened that movement up yeah. to the point that led to, um, what's his name, Constantine saying, oh, you know, let's just meld all this together. Yeah. Who knows? I think it gave him credence that, you know, if he read the, the testimony and the history of it, he probably come to the conclusion there was something to this guy. I mean, it started a movement, and you know what? If you can't beat them, you might as well lead them. And that's what exactly he did. He couldn't beat the Christians, right? So he leads it's them. Today, though, it's, um, it only takes a generation to change things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Caroline oh, was forget. telling me she saw an ad the other night on television for, like, baby snappies, huggies or something, and the little kids are talking and they're saying, oh, when I grow up and get married, whether it's a, a him or a her, in an ad on television. Oh, my gosh. And this is in Australia? One generation. And once they get it into the schools and the universities, you're done. You're cooked. Yeah, that's where in the indoctrination happens. Hmm. Well, any questions? Uh, I got a cold. You got a cold? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just have to, uh, sorry, I was w working on it, working on it um, um, before the meeting, and the computer crashed, but I had saved the code. But not the like what the words meant, but I remember what they mean. But there's a there's a tiny uh, pro, pro, prologue, or or I have to show you. Uh, uh, do you see this? Yes, brother, we see it. Yep. Isn't it? This is uh, like. They transfer it Lucifer, but it's, isn't it Hallel? It is Hallel. That's Hallel. Howl, howl you. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's howling or something. Son of, the ha I, son of howling is what Hallel um, means. Yeah, and um, if, yeah, and basically in Icelandic, it's connected to witches, and the name in Icelandic is for witches, uh, basically, or, or magic. It's um, like something about crying out or howling. That's that's in Icelandic. So it's a uh, quite interesting because this is this seems to be uh, yes, son. Son of the, son of the howling, howling. The, that that entry there has been mistranslated to Lucifer, and there's that yeah. Lu Luciferian stuff <laughs> where they actually follow the Baphomet, but that's not entirely what's going on there. But you're right; it's it's a mistranslation. And it's yeah, and dude, this is where the Luciferians say, oh, you know, he's the son of the morning. He's Lucifer's yeah. good. He's a good guy. Yeah. This is not Satan. This is Lucifer. This is, 
And you know, and the Mormons think that Lucifer was Yeshua's brother, by the way. They were brothers. But, but, but um, it's sad to say, if, if you meet a Luciferian, you would say, sorry, he doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, here is a table. And uh, I was just, it's, uh, it's uh, like a uh, hypothesis. It's, I was just checking out a theory I heard some years ago. And the access term is um, burning. Oh, oh, oh. It's, um, what, what was it again, the sentence? Uh, the 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 stones of fire. Stones of fire, yeah. Yeah, which uh, that's in Ezekiel, I believe, right? Yeah, which m might have mm. been like this halal walking in, in and out of uh, yeah. up and down down yeah, in. The the, 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 name, the name halal and the, and Satan are the same person. They're not two different entities. Yeah, and the covering cherub that's mentioned. He walks on the stones of fire. It's all the same one. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, uh, well, some some disagree, but uh, I think Stephen Pitchin disagrees with that. But uh, really? I'm, I he's he thinks that uh, there was someone on now now you see TV that was saying that Halal or Satan and 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 uh, Lucifer were, were two different. <coughs> beings or something i i'm like i heard that well i mean that's that and you have to realize the context of isaiah fourteen twelve. that is rebuked to, to to satan if you look at the imagery he's he, he's actually falling and the king the kings of the earth mock him for for yeah. accomplishing the usurping uh yahuwah which is what he's trying to do and that's exactly what happens in in revelation 9 and in revelation 12 he's cast out of heaven he falls to the earth it's the same entity they're they're not taking into account the imagery that's going on they're just going by the etymology and yeah. by the by the way guys satan is currently on a lower level of heaven right now as an accuser okay so he's not walking on the earth right now he hasn't been cast out this is yet to come. He has been cast down to a lower heaven, but he hasn't been cast down to he uh, uh, earth yet. Amen. Okay. Yeah, he still walks in the heavenlies. He wants everybody to affirm to pe people to still think that he's an angel of light. Yeah. He's, so he's, he's traveling just, around space, right? That's, he is that's in, his he's, lower heaven, right? He's in the heavens he's above the, us and in between us and the Father. He is between right. us and the Father. That would be outer he's, space. Yeah. He, he is the prince of the power of the air. That's right. And that's why it says that, because he controls that and his dominion and his angels. That's where they roam and dwell and where they, that's why they, they control cities from above, right? The angel that was coming to, to Daniel had to wrestle with the angel, uh, the fallen angel of Persia, right? Yeah. And they wrestled. They fought in the heavens above you. There's a war. Guys, if you didn't know, there's a war going on right above your head in the heavens between yeah. angels and fallen angels. That's Bible. That's what it says. I thought, I thought it might have been interdimensional. It very well could be. I mean, we can't see them. We, we're, you know, we're not able to see into the spiritual realm um, mm. yet. That will, that will come, guys. You see that also in Revelation where the mystery of Yahuwah is ended Right? I believe that's when the veil comes off everyone's eyes. Atheist or believer alike, everybody will know the real truth of what's happening. That's that's in Revelation chapter ten, verse yeah. seven, I do believe. So there's no longer a mystery whether there's a heaven and hell and angels and demons and, and you and it's all very apparent, right? Because you're seeing it. We'll see things as but they are. Yeah, that's interesting that your access term makes a connection between the, the Hallel and the stones of fire, because the one who's walking up and down the stones of fire in, in Ezekiel 28 is the Shatan. He's even mentioned by name. Yeah, yeah. Well, this this is the access, the, the stones of fire. 
and this is uh, Hallel Hey Hey Yod Lamet Lamet, and it's it's backwards here. Yeah. Uh, other than yeah, any uh, verse on itself, there that's pretty interesting. No, it's not. It's it's one off. It's one, it's one number off. But that's still an uh, anomaly. It's in the same line. It's 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 the light blue. Yeah, I see that. This and and here, and then the the other words, because I I I heard this hypothesis that um, when he was walking in the stones of fire, uh, that the stones of fire were the souls of humans in in like um, be. In maybe in eternity past or something before, before they were born. Hmm. So so I checked on. Uh, it's I, I'm not sure of which word it is, but one word is um, souls, and the other one is past. So I was just checking out and and trying to. Uh, Try to uh, practice, but I'm I'm not sure which one it is. I lost my notes. Yeah, I would look for cherub, uh, angels, or angel, things like that. Uh, how do you spell cherub? Cherub in Hebrew. Somebody got a, a yeah. translator. 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 Uh. I think it's Kaf, Kaf wow. Resh Vav Bet. Yeah, there we go. Or you could have. Oh, wait a minute. The, the other spelling is Mem Lamet Aleph Kaf. Yeah, which is Malik, Malak. Mem Lamet. Mem Lamet Aleph. Aleph Kaf. Kaf. Yeah, not, uh, not, mel, not the Q. The other, the other one looks like a C. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ka in your red book, Jonathan, it has this cough, fresh, wild bet. Cough, well, not your red book with that handy little red book Darla showed us yeah. from Shimon Zimmerman. Cough, fresh, wild bet. Yeah. Cherub, cough, fresh, wild bet. They have two spellings. The last <laughs> one's cough, fresh, wild bet. The first one is Dalit, wild bet, Dalit, bet, wild. <laughs> so. uh, is, is it uh, a cough? Cough, yeah. Right to see the backwards C. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mem Lamet Aleph Kaf. Yep. M Melak. Melak, yep. Well, it might fill the screen, but I got it saved. Uh, yeah, it's here like, like 100 times. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, you know, take out the redundant. And, and keep the smallest skip. And I see you got in the plain text, like like in the heavenlies, like, as if it's in the heavenlies there on your table. You got you know, your malaks all up in the top. I saw that. Yeah, they were they were everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I I just reloaded it. But is there like uh, what is it? What is the um, name for ke ke cherubim? Cherub. Cherubim? Well, Cherubim. It would be Kof, um, Resh, Bob, Bet, Yod, Mim. That would be Cherubim. Kof, Resh, Vav, Bob, Bet. Bet. Yod, Mim. Yod, Mim. Mm -hmm. just, just checking it out. Maybe it comes all over the place. It so. might be in the plain text because uh, you have that. Uh, well, did I... Well, I have to change. <clears throat> also, you might want to, you know, do a snooping, pull, 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 left and right, up and down. Yeah. You can probably find uh, it. No, this is taken. I'll just put um, red again. If it came, then... No, it's not here. Yeah. I can... Well, I roll just, up and down, kind of look around because I would think it's in the plain text somewhere. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, I'll try maybe once to go up. Oh, whoa. Okay. Uh, I mean, all the way down. Check it. There you go. All the way up. Ch check it out here. Nope. Well, okay. Some things don't appear, you know? Yeah, I know. I know. Terrible is the, the plural, so maybe it don't apply when you're talking about stones of fire. We're talking about one angel. That's the cherub. Cover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But the, there is this hypothesis that the stones of fire, because we are told we are li living stones in a living built in a in a building, and somebody came up with this hypothesis that maybe the stones are the souls yet to be born before they are sent to earth. But uh, it's a hypothesis. I I, I believe that they're. Uh... It's it's a imagery of a of a portal of a gate that goes yeah. between uh, here and the heavenlies, and and more than just the heavenlies, he has access to be able to travel around the the bottomless pit. I mean, that's where the prison is, so he's able to go up and down that. <laughs> well, he's. He's defeated. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was it. Any more codes? Any more codes? I got ones? one, Jonathan. Good Harry. code, uh, Brother Harry. Yeah, good stuff. And Brother Scott. <laughs> oh, yeah. And uh, Thank Sister you. Paula. Good codes. Percy, yeah, it was just a practice. Let me know what I'm sharing. It's rendering. While you're doing that, uh, Harry, um, there's a comment in the Cambridge New English Bible that translates it as, I set you with a towering cherub as a guardian. You were on God's holy hill and you walked proudly among stones that flashed with fire. Nice. Okay. Okay, now we're seeing a table. Okay, so... Um, I was looking in the news that one article that Brother Chris had posted about the ship that the U.S. seized, the Wise Honest. So I wanted to see if maybe it was in the code somewhere. I um, put in from Matthew to John, and it, it's actually in uh, – it starts in Mark and goes to John. Um, you have any ELS, hey, cat – Kuf, Mem, Yo, Shin, Resh, the wise, honest, right here. Um, I added this verse in because I like it. It's uh, and when it was evening, he came with his twelve. That's Yeshua. He came with his twelve apostles. Um, Amar Lahan. That is, and he said to them. That's in here three times. But uh, we have the coal. which is running right through the wise, honest. We have uh, missiles down here um, to be fired. Is right here. And then right here to be fired. Wow. Um, you have export runs right along the top and you have export that runs right here. Um, banned, they banned the ship. There was 26 times it was in there. Uh, runs right down through the wise honest. And then it runs down right here. Uh, concealment. You have concealment right here. And then you have, he said to them, which was Amar Lahan. So he said to them is here three times. So you have, he said to them, 
to be fired. Uh, the wise, honest, and then that's about as far as I got as in looking up words close to the term, the access term. But I thought that was pretty neat. You have uh, Mark fourteen seventeen, the coal missiles to be fired, export ban concealment, and he said to them all within that little area, and they all have to they all have to deal with that ship. So it was just a little. You know, I was, I was wondering if they were in the codes. I started, I think, in uh, Hosea. That's my favorite book. So I didn't find it in Hosea. It was here. They said twice, but it was only, it only showed up once under the wise honest. So that's as far as I got on that. Very interesting. And that is in Peshitta. Yes. Amazing. Is that referring to the ship that's been sent over, that he sent over to Hormuz? Yes, that was that Iranian ship that the U.S. Uh, I guess. What did they practice on? Do what? What the Iranian ship that the you said that was the Iranian ship? Yeah, it was an Iranian ship, wasn't it? I'm not sure. That they were did their practice exercise on bombing? Oh yeah, the. They, the Iranians, they dressed up an uh, oil tanker with yeah. wood a, a, as a USS uh, aircraft carrier. And then they went out and they shot it all up. And it was a really spectacular thing. You see this wood flying and everything like that. But the whole thing is completely unrealistic uh, since they actually they took a, an air, aircraft carrier, uh, Kitty Hawk class from the 1965. And in 2005, like this thing is 50 years old and they couldn't sink it. They, they, for weeks, they just wailed on this aircraft carrier and they couldn't sink it. They actually had to muddle it by blowing a hole in the bottom and allowing it to sink. That's the only way they could sink it. <laughs> the Iranians, the Iranians think they're going to walk, walk up there with one missile and, and blow it out of the water. <laughs> the the, the so only what, way what to was the code in, in your code. Brother, what was that shit that you're referring to? The cold? The wise honest. Oh. The wise honest. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, guys, this has been a really interesting class. We've gone three hours today. Is there anything else anybody wants to share before we close? Great um, stuff. I'd like to share something, if, if it's okay, brother. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be uploading to YouTube or not, um, but um, in the event you do, I just kind of, you know, it, this a lot of this information isn't easy to convey, and it's, it's with, um, obviously, mixed emotions and sorrows and stuff, and it's, you know, a lot of people enjoy, you know, I guess what could be typified as, like, doom and gloom and, but I just, you know, wanted to take the opportunity um, to remind people that there's a message of hope uh, with Yeshua. And um, as Brother Chris is always reminding people in his videos, just to uh, to get saved, repent. Um, there's hope in all of this. You know, at the end of the day, um, it's important to make that point because, um, you know, as a watchman, um, delivering this information. I, I often, I'm guilty of kind of uh, reminding people of that. And that's, that's most important really. So I, I just wanted to kind of take the opportunity to do that. So. Um, Thank you very much, brother Scott, for, 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 for being, being intuitive and receptive about that. That it uh -huh. is just about the codes and the, the fact that these things our heavenly father said that these things have to take place in order to bring in the kingdom. And we, we need to think about our personal salvation with Yeshua. It's our, 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 we're witnessing the end of an age here. A new age is about to come in and where we want to be. And we don't want to be on the, uh, other side of that, which is the furnace, we want to be in in the kingdom with with our heavenly Savior. That's that's where we want to be.
Absolutely. Thanks for giving that message, message brother. Absolutely. And I, I'm thankful to, to have the opportunity to deliver that message. And, you know, I, I just, I, I wanted to take the opportunity to do that. Like I said, because, you know, we've done videos before and where I've got a little, um, uh, worked up and, and, you know, and, and you know, so oftentimes, sometimes we do, we get, we get a little animated and worked up. Um, and we had done a video or two and, and I, I didn't take the opportunity to do this, so and which I, I need to do, and I'm thankful to have the time to do that. So, thank you again, and and to be able to do it all alongside all of you brothers and sisters is a blessing. So, so thank you. Amen. I love this little community that we're building here, guys. This is really um, fun to to meet with you guys and to, and to talk about the these codes for a long time. Chris and I were the only two that had something in common, <laughs> right? We, we couldn't talk shop with anybody other than, you know, rabbis. Uh, but so it's great to have uh, a lineup of, of up and coming code searchers that are, you, you guys are doing extremely well. I'm, I'm very impressed at the, at the progress you guys are making. Uh, keep up the work in your modules. This is a, a much needed foundation you need um, to, to actually get to, you know, recognizing words and putting together root words and phrases and things like that. Is there any more questions or anything anyone wants to add before I close? No. All right, guys, well, the weekend is upon us. Um, Shabbat is Sunday, Sunday this month. Um, so. If you're in uh, Australia or, the United, uh, or Europe or Asia area, then it's Monday. Well, there you go. We love you guys. Let me pray for you, and then we will, we will see you in the next minute as Darla steps on Elijah. <laughs> Abba, Yehoah, we are thankful for what you're doing in this uh, class, Father, and the amazing way you're revealing these things to us. I uh, just just want to thank you, Father. Uh, we we love your name. We love uh, the the fact that you sent Yeshua as our Messiah. We're grateful for that. Yes. Father, we just give you praise for, uh, for what you've already done for us and, and just the added fact of you revealing yourself in these codes, just icing on the cake. It's just amazing to fellowship with other people uh, that are doing this same thing, Father, and I thank you for that. Go with them this week, Father, and keep them protected. <laughs> nourish them. If they're sick in their body, please bring them back to 100%, Father. Um, we ask that you keep them protected from the enemy, bring them back at the appointed time. We ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen. We Amen. Love you guys. Amen. Shalom. Have a good Thank weekend. You, see you guys on Shalom. Discord. All right. Thanks, uh, Brother John and Sister Darla. Thank you for everything. Everything. Shalom. Thank you guys. Shalom. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. Shalom. 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 Shalom.